Hi guys, a quick follow up from my last uh, update. Uh, one of them is that uh, I had mentioned uh, the petition is uh, going to be closed uh, in a month or in a few weeks time and those that wish to stay in touch will have to send me an email request. Uh, otherwise I won't know how to find them or whether they're interested and so on. If I do not receive an email, of course you are not going to get any update from me. So I can say as a follow-up of that, that I have received quite a few uh, emails and I have already started creating a new uh, list of uh, recipients. Uh, I think there is more than a hundred already and uh, whenever I have a spare time, I'm including a few. And I was quite impressed to see that, you know, people from far off lands, even as far as, uh, as far away as, uh, as uh, Australia and, uh, and Europe uh, have asked to be uh, included in my list so they are obviously in interested and uh, that goes to show that you know there is hope for us uh, anyway it, it's a global problem it's not just a Canadian problem and different people will have to approach uh, this problem differently and hopefully uh, not only they see what we are doing but uh, hopefully they will send feedback so we can learn uh, what works uh, there if something works in Germany or in Australia or in uh, South America and uh, maybe we can uh, copy that idea and uh, make it work here. So this is another update that thank you gentlemen those who are showing interest and uh, we will do what we can within our capacity. And now I will go over to my official rant of the day. Good morning my friends. Uh, this is uh, Tony Mitra again and uh, I have been mulling over this uh, petition, not so much the petition itself, but about the list of supporters and who I believe are of a mind that they do not like glyphosate or they are suspicious about glyphosate and they would like it to be removed from our environment or at least restricted or questions begin to be asked and so on. So apart from the petition which is going to be closed, uh, once these documents reach uh, Ottawa, we hope that will happen within a few weeks. Uh, what to what to learn from here and how to proceed from this point is something that I've been uh, spending some time on, and I have been you know approached by people with some ideas that I should uh, now that there is a, a reasonable interest base across uh, Canada. Uh, and about this uh, glyphosate and about the problems with this chemical, especially when its safety data is being kept hidden, uh, all that is there. But, you know, there are many things that I'm aware of that could be done by uh, citizens with some little bit of organization uh, to push back at the glyphosate and to expose some of the uh, some of the issues with it, including how much of it is in our food and our environment and so on. These things could not be checked easily even a year or two ago, but today it can be. So, and this doesn't require breaking any law. This doesn't require asking ministers to do something in uh, Ottawa. This just requires uh, some people getting together and pushing our local governments and our local uh, different organizations to, to, to cough up some money and start testing our environment for glyphosate and start putting those data out for the public right now. This is possible now. This was not possible be before. And uh, and most Canadians probably do not know. So here is the thing I was uh, thinking about. Getting our municipalities to start testing our water, our soil, and our food for presence of glyphosate. This is legal. This is today easy. It was not easy before. It only needs uh, some funds and citizens can do it, but they have to cough up $300 every time they want to test something. It is much easier for the municipalities or, uh, or some lo local government to do that. Of course, uh, a provincial government should have more money. Uh, Ottawa government should have more money, but they are difficult to influence by a small group of people from a small town. But a municipality is more approachable so that even if some of the municipalities start testing, they, they set aside some money, uh, we begin to take the first step about testing and putting the data out uh, in, in the open for the public. So in order to do that, if I write to the mayor, which I did already, and uh, the mayor conveniently ignores it, 
but if a number of people write or a number of people make a delegation and want to see the council and present this case, that becomes a different matter. So, this petition on uh, glyphosate has shown me that different towns have quite a lot of like-minded people, although they don't know each other. All they need to do is find each other and uh, sort of have a brainstorming uh, effort and, and, and figure out how to do things. In my town of Delta, which is a small town in British Columbia, there are still 80 people that signed this petition. But I don't know them personally. And, you know, if half of them wanted to be in a delegation to uh, meet the Delta Municipal Council and and face the mayor and tell them you better set aside $5,000 or $10,000 a year and test 30 or 40 or 50 uh, samples every year, same places, year upon year, and disclose them to the people and the world how much glyphosate is in which part of the soil, especially where agriculture is going on and this uh, this uh, glyphosate is used or in our water or in our bread that is being sold in our stores or our uh, packaged food coming from somewhere. These data today are, it is legal to test and it doesn't cost too much money. Uh, $10,000 will probably test uh, 40 or 50 samples, which is quite a large number for a small town. And if they can't uh, afford $10,000 or okay, $5,000, I mean, somebody can make a start and, and Delta has only 80. But if you talk about Toronto or Montreal, you know, there are th more than 1,000 people there. I mean, if if I take the towns surrounding Delta, like uh, Langley and Surrey and uh, other, it easily goes to more than 500 supporters. So if we can figure out how to meet up and do some brainstorming, either about start pushing somebody to start testing, because the labs are right now available. I have uh, not only put up the sample of my letter to a mayor on the petition, but I have also circulated a standard letter we can write to the labs uh, nearby to find out what they test, how much they test, how much time they need, uh, how is the accuracy of the test, how much it costs and so on. And, and, and labs answer because they want business anyway. Another thing, why do you think today we have so many labs to test glyphosate uh, in food even that was not possible uh, even uh, a year or two ago. Why? The reason is the government of Canada has started testing huge amount of food for glyphosate concentration behind our back, not telling anyone, anyone that they are doing it. But the labs are the ones that get the business and they are the ones who have been advised by the government that they want to test a lot of uh, food for glyphosate. So they, so the labs better start uh, uh, offering this service and also start getting accredited and uh, uh, and uh, be certified for this. So apart from that, a lot of uh, organic growers or, or institutions that are trying to uh, buy and sell organic food and so on, they are also approaching the labs to quietly start testing their produce, their fruit, their even leaves of their trees uh, to see how much of the pesticide is, is still there because, uh, the, because of spray. Some of them do use the spray, uh, but still want to know if it can be washed off and, and they give samples to see whether uh, glyphosate is still uh, detectable and so on. There's a lot of quiet activity going on uh, about glyphosate that nobody talks about. Another example, just a few months ago, you could not test cow milk or human breast milk in Canada for a presence of glyphosate. Today you can because some labs are already uh, figuring out how to do that using high quality uh, liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry instruments. I mean, these things are happening that the situation is in a flux, but more and more labs are scrambling to get on the bandwagon. I just spoke with a, a lab in Ontario who don't know how to test bread. They, they will test many other things, but not bread. And uh, on the other hand, another lab nearby in, in Richmond, they'll be happy to test bread. So all this is going on right now, you know, and, you know, government testing so much of food on the quiet by themselves. Why? Why do you think they are testing it? Ah, it's a good question. I don't know the answer, but I don't think public safety is directly related to It's not that the government is worried that the food is becoming unsafe. It's something quite different. You see, the safe levels of glyphosate has been set 
as advised by companies like Monsanto to our government. If Monsanto said, you know, 20 parts per uh, million, uh, 20 parts per billion is safe for this and this product, you know. And of course, there is no proof that it is safe. It is probably not safe. Nobody has verified uh, properly, independently, but nonetheless, that, that limit has been set. Now, with increased amount of glyphosate everywhere, the U.S. government or EPA as well as our uh, ministries are a little bit worried that the previously set safe limits may have been crossed. That is why I think they are quietly testing behind our back. And if they find some of the limits has been crossed already, what will they do? They will quietly raise the safe limits. If something is at 20 parts per billion and now the, uh, the safe limit is 20 parts per billion and actual... Uh, figures are showing up 30, then they will raise the safe limit from 20 to 50 and they say, you see, whatever we have is still very safe. Don't worry, we have already tested everything. This is what I think is going on and which is why the government is so silent on what they are doing. However, these tests are legal. We can test ourselves irrespective of what government says is safe or not safe. We can start putting the data that this is, these are the readings and these are the trend. This area had only 5 parts per billion last year. Now it is 11. Next year it is going to 16. And at this rate, it is going to be 115. I mean, we need to start getting this data and it is possible. We need to, you know, send delegates to the mayor, start pushing if there is another organization that is, you know, health, um, Fraser Health or some, some other. We can start doing these things. But we need to brainstorm what is the best way, what is the best thing to do. We, we can, of course, demand for the safety uh, test data to be disclosed, but that's something only Health Canada can do because they are in position of it. Others are not. The, the, the municipality is not. They can lend their voice, yes, if they, if, they, if they are really supportive. They will not be supportive unless there is people pressure. So all this, this video I am making is to ask you guys to, you know, provide feedback on how we can join hands with like-minded people nearby in our own towns and neighboring towns and how to brainstorm, how to push back, how, how to make a grassroots movement move to the next step. So from my side, I'm saying that Delta residents, please, if you are interested and if you have signed this petition, please consider sending me a note Sending me an email, tony.mitra at gmail.com. I put it up on the uh, on the uh, petition itself. And we will call on the phone and we will figure out, uh, you know, if some of you are interested, I will drive to your place or go in a park or in a restaurant, whatever. And we'll sit down and discuss how to move forward within Delta. It doesn't matter if Delta is a small town. Small town, big town, villages, everybody is in the same soup and everybody has to fight back. It, it, it's, you know... Only Tony Mitra standing and the roadside and jumping up and down is not going to make any change. But 20,000 people doing that will shake up this organization. So, I mean, this government. So, let's find, you know, how to do that. And similarly, those of you who are listening here, you know, uh, if you want, uh, supposing you are in Montreal and you would like to, you know, likewise people to approach you and uh, you want to start forming and you, you want them to know how to get you, if you are comfortable with it, uh, you put up a post there or an email to me uh, uh, advising your, your email address that you that you would like all Montreal people to, uh, to, to, to consider writing to. And that's how we can start passing this around and start making little groups and then we had we had to find out how the groups can stay in touch with each other. We learned something from what Montreal is doing or what, you know, Prince George is doing or Toronto is doing or Kelowna is doing. And then we see if we can do the same thing. Uh, others will know what we are doing. If they like, they can do the same thing. And eventually we bring up this grassroots movement. If we have to take the mantle and, and we have to take the baton and we have to carry the fight. We cannot depend on blinking politicians to do this you know i mean it is not fair to them because they are, sometimes their hands are tied sometimes there's uh, things that they uh, agree with you but cannot say it cannot do it or for all kinds of things we have to change the mechanism of how political process works in this country i think we can do that from the ground up we cannot do that from top down so anyway i'm open for suggestions guys i'm already 65 plus 
I don't know how many years I have left of uh, useful life in, uh, uh, for me, but I intend to try till I drop dead. It's not for me to just lie down and take it. And I'm pretty convinced now that just, just signing some petitions or, you know, hanging around with big shots and listening to them, what they say, and then clapping and supporting, oh, you are so good, you are doing great, I am behind you, carry on. All this is not going to work. Everybody has to face their government, find a way to join hands and do that. Everybody will have to learn how to exert the only power that they have, the power of the vote and the power of numbers. They have to find and they have to collectively, singly and collectively apply pressure on the government. We do not need to spend our own money. We do not need to ask for donations. We do not need to, you know, cough up money for that. But we do need to join hands, spend our time, raise our voice, uh, write to people, let them see our faces, show ourselves that we are fed up with this political process and we will do whatever it needs to be done to safeguard our future generation, our environment, our food, and the health of our children. Anyway, I'm now done with my 12-minute rant.